Hello guys and gals, Data Ombre here with another video. The uh, topic of today's discussion is an Amiga CD32 accelerator card. Um, I have recently purchased a TF360 card from a very reliable producer of these cards in Canada, Mr. Alan Marks. I will leave a link in, uh, to his website in the description below in case you're interested in checking him out. He does some quality work uh, at a very fair price. I should point out that this is not a paid advertisement or anything like that. It's simply an overview of the card from my own perspective, as well as a little blurb about the Amiga CD32 history and the accelerator cards uh, for it in general. Um, so for those of you who may not know, the Amiga CD32 is a video games console and it was released by Commodore back in uh, 1993. It was touted as the world's first 32-bit system. It didn't last very long on the market. I believe it was roughly six months to a year at the most. Uh, the reason being is uh, Commodore's demise. They went uh, belly up and filed for bankruptcy sometime in 1994. Um, Commodore and their interesting approach to business is a topic for another discussion. Uh, however, I will mention this to, I guess, give some perspective. So Commodore were desperate to make some money after, their, after they consistently were losing money quarter after quarter. And uh, I guess some genius at Commodore thought that perhaps the console market would be a wise area to expand in. So what Commodore did was essentially repackage an actual Amiga-lined computer into console form factor. And they slapped a CD-ROM drive in it, and they called it a console. Uh, the CD32 closely resembles an Amiga 1200 computer specs and features-wise. They're nearly identical under the hood. So... I guess while this move was flexible, one might say, and it offered, you know, an opening for a flood of existing Amiga computer games onto the console market, the problem with this was that by 1993, these existing Amiga games were, you know, showing their age and were mostly of the 16-bit era style when it came to gameplay, graphics, execution, and overall presentation. And this approach, although, you know, potentially offering easy software porting and access, you know, it immediately showed a dated look onto a brand new 32-bit system. And, uh, you know, let's not forget that in 1993, we are fully in the age of the 3DO Atari Jaguar and also PlayStation and Sega Saturn being on the horizon. And PC 3D gaming is all the rage at this time. So releasing a console during that period, <laughs> you better show up uh, ready with 3D in mind and be ready with software that will you know, take advantage of it. Now the CD32 did offer an onboard chip that had some very basic 3D functionality built in. It was called the Ikeco chip, and it also acted as the CD-ROM drive controller, interestingly enough. But this was added as uh, to the design as an afterthought, and it really, you know, did not change the standard Amiga computer chip design that's in there. And it wasn't utilized by almost any of the developers. So long story short, the system ended up getting uh, mainly ports of existing Amiga floppy disk games released for, you know, the computer, uh, with maybe some Redbook audio added on uh, and slightly decreased loading times. Maybe some intro animations were added on but, you know, as I've said, no new unique or innovative software whatsoever, you know, that utilized specifically the power of the CD32. You know, it, it felt like an Amiga computer, basically, as far as uh, gaming went. 
So as a 1993 product in the console market, not very impressive. It didn't stand a chance. However, it does, uh, it does hold some interesting capabilities and offers potential, you know, this little box. It's kind of uh, future-proof, and I'll show you how. Uh, so, so most Amiga computers, they offer expansion capabilities. Most of them come with some sort of an expansion slot. Uh, the Amiga 1200 came with an accelerator card slot, and this slot offered uh, possibilities of installation of accelerator cards that would carry usually an onboard 68030 or 68040 or 68060 Motorola CPU, as well as some sort of a hard drive controller on it and uh, memory expansion as well. So this would be something along the lines of, say, you know, in the PC world, if you upgrade your process or your memory and hard drive, but you know, hard drive controller, but with Amiga, you did it all in one shot from like one specific place. And uh, interestingly enough, Commodore provided this uh, feature to the CD32 as well. You know, they, it had an expansion slot, uh, you know, ma making the CD32 even more, you know, an Amiga computer in disguise, really. So the uh, back of the unit has this cover that can be taken off. Like when you remove the cover, there's uh, an expansion connector available there. And then you would plug in your accelerator card assembly into it. Usually the accelerator card assembly comes in a form of a, you know, harness, which traditionally provided the missing uh, computer ports, Amiga computer ports, which were standard on the Amiga computer. And uh, it would make those available for the CD32. Now the accelerators for CD32, uh, they have existed since mid nineties and really they're nothing new. They've been around for a while now, but over the years they have become increasingly rare and expensive. Uh, a lot of people realized, you know, that their console could be transformed into an actual Amiga computer. And this would, you know, open a whole new world of possibilities. And, you know, this increased the demand of uh, these uh, rare cards and, Price just kept going up and up. Uh, same kind of goes for any kind of Amiga computer accelerator in general. Uh, so your console could have a hard drive, a faster CPU, more memory, and uh, you could also install the Amiga operating system uh, on the hard drive and directly boot into it. Really cool stuff. So back to the TF360 card, uh, you know, what makes this card special? And that's the fact that it's a 68060 based accelerator card. Uh, so it's the top Motorola 68K line uh, accelerator, uh, sorry, CPU that's based on, that's available on it. And this is the first card of its kind for the Amiga CD32. Uh, so far, the console has only uh, seen 68030 based accelerator cards. No one has ever made an 060 card uh, as of yet. Uh, this, the designer of this card, Mr. Stephen Leary, uh, has uh, for quite a while now been on a mission to uh, make uh, available affordable accelerator cards for the Amiga and uh, also open source the development and production of these cards. And uh, he has been releasing cards for the Amiga CD32 uh, and Amiga 1200 for years now. But I'm happy to say that, uh, you know, he designed and released a 68060 based card for the Amiga CD32, uh, pushing capabilities of this 1993 console even further than ever before. So here's the uh, Amiga CD32 console. And uh, as you can see, it's a pretty cool design. Um, it's got the big 32-bit sign on it, letting you know that that's a 32-bit system. 
Uh, it's got the uh, kind of like embossed Commodore logo there and uh, the big Amiga CD32 sign here. Uh, this here is a reset button and uh, the power of the CD-ROM activity LED lights are there as well. The CD-ROM activity light uh, ends up working as the hard drive activity light uh, once you install the hard drive inside. So that's kind of cool. And uh, sort of similarly to a Sega Genesis, you have uh, the headphone port uh, for your headphones and you have a volume slider for the, for the same. Uh, so looking at the uh, back of the unit, this is kind of uh, the cool thing. Is this uh, accelerator? Is this expansion slot for the accelerator? And right now, I have a 3D printed uh, cover to sort of like uh, work around the PCB harness, which uh, uh, would otherwise be kind of like naked in there. The uh, DB23 port that you see uh, in view is the Amiga computer video port. So that gives out the RGB signal, uh, which is quite cool, very useful. And uh, the harness also comes with a PC keyboard port, which uh, offers easy keyboard access to this console. Otherwise, you would have to obtain a genuine Amiga keyboard and uh, plug it into this uh, port uh, right here on the side next to the joystick port so that AUX port is essentially an Amiga keyboard port so you could be you could use utilize it for, with an actual Amiga keyboard and uh, other than that uh, standard stuff here the power on and off switch this is the power supply port the RF uh, out for TV signal, S video port, that was kind of uh, cool back in the day, and the standard uh, um, composite video and uh, left and right audio ports. Really cool stuff. Uh, the CD-ROM drive is actually um, 2X, so that wasn't too bad. Uh, you know, for back of the day. It was uh, one of the faster ones. Uh, usually uh, CD drives of that age, uh, like in the Neo Geo CD or Sega CD or the TurboGrafx CD, they were 1X. So this was, uh, this was a bit of a, I guess, like an upgrade. Really cool. So here is the star of the show, the uh, actual TF360 accelerator card. Uh, so just to give you some perspective, it's very small. It would uh, pop in there together with the uh, harness uh, adapter. It would uh, click in and sort of like slot in together with it. Right now I have my existing 030 expansion in there which I will replace with uh, this bad boy sometime soon. Uh, so just to give you a quick overview, uh, there's the uh, 68060 CPU. I had to buy the CPU separately. Uh, it's uh, kind of like tricky nowadays to find uh, full uh, 68060 CPU that has the built-in MMU and FPU unit. Uh, they're, they're increasingly becoming very expensive. Back in the day, these were readily available in sort of like the late 90s and I would say all throughout 2000s. And then uh, I guess due to the demand of, due to the demand of Amiga enthusiasts, they, they just kind of like became uh, scarce all of a sudden. It was very difficult to uh, find these. So uh, yeah, the, the price has gone up uh very very expensive and not really affordable really 
if you're going to be uh, utilizing something like this nowadays, uh, it's basically for hobby reasons for playing around. Uh, no, no other point in uh, buying this uh, other than just for uh, you know geekiness, pushing this uh, unit to to the max for kicks. Uh, practical uses are just uh, not there at all. Uh, back to the card. This is the built-in uh, onboard uh, two and a half inch uh, ID hard drive port expander. Uh, what people do usually is they use a, a complex flash to ID converter so that the space utilization is kind of like minimal once you install that adapter and a compact flash card all of this can sort of like easily more easily go inside uh, the unit an actual 2.5 inch hard drive would occupy more space so that doesn't really make sense uh, these are the logic chips on board with uh, some heat sinks installed on them and uh, these two chips are I believe two times 64 megabytes of RAM. And uh, lastly, I think we have uh, a fan port here. Uh, if you want to install some slim profile fan onto the CPU, I won't be doing that, uh, at least not for now. And this is a clock port expander expansion slot, uh, similarly to Amiga 1200, which has that clock port expansion on board. Uh, Stephen Leary has uh, made this available on this accelerator card so you can leverage some of those Amiga 1200 uh, clock port expansions if you have them now on the CD32. So in an upcoming video I plan to install this card into my CD32 system and test how everything works. Uh, as of right now, I already have a 68030 based accelerator card installed in my Amiga CD32, uh, which already boots into Amiga OS. Uh, but uh, the only difference here that uh, is that the 060 card, the new one, will need to have some additional CPU libraries installed. Uh, as part of the Amiga OS so that the card could work properly and not uh, crash the system. So this will be a bit of a challenge to pull off and uh, in an upcoming video, you know, I'll plan to do this installation and see how everything tests out and how everything works. So please uh, stay tuned for that video and as always if you like this kind of content please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. It really does help a lot. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.